attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, I'm John Amos, an independent consultant, and I previously worked with Michelle and Atkins. For the last 12 years, I've been a co-opted member of the CIHT Procurement and Delivery Panel. The project brief was to provide a best practice toolkit to identify and inform on the procurement route choices and delivery options available. It was to be an interactive web-based system with a guidance document that included evidence case studies. It was to link to other HMEP initiatives such as the standard specification and the standard form of contract so that we didn't duplicate other work that was going on. The benefits are estimated at £50,000 per procurement. This would include any consultancy and in-house professional costs. And on the current program of new contracts in the local authority market, we estimate this to be about 1.5 million savings over the next three years. So who developed the toolkit? This was the P&D panel who had been discussing the best way to share knowledge to members of procurement and delivery knowledge that they picked up. We thought a website would be the most appropriate and in 2008-9 we approached organisations including DFT to fund such an idea but funding wasn't available in those times. In 2011, we were approached by HMEP and to build on our idea, which would save some time and cost. So, URS were appointed as project managers, with Kevin Sloan of URS as our project manager, and key members of the procurement and delivery panel were appointed to work with URS and those included Stephen Child, Keith Fountain, Martin Duffy, and myself. Pixlate were then appointed as website developers, and CIHT will maintain the website. We used the results of a survey carried out by URS in 2011 to all highway authorities as a basis for the toolkit. This survey looked at existing arrangements, changes planned for the future, and suggest, asked for suggestions and ideas on procurement, standard documents, how we could reduce procurement costs, how we could make best practice available. So the toolkit that we developed was done by a process of workshops and consultations and engaging with both local authorities and the industry. We looked at the initial considerations through to defining the contract and the other HMEP initiatives that were being carried out. We came up with three interactive elements looking at the influences to assess the current service and identify the need to change explore options to define the future service and select appropriate delivery options and then to evaluate those options using an options appraisal template. These interactive elements have been the subject of consultation and review and the process, content scores and weightings have been refined through this engagement. The guidance document, which is now over 90 pages, has been developed and is under continuous review and is available for download and is linked to each page on the website. The website is being developed as easy to use, easy to update and easy to administer. The procurement process finalised on through this engagement has seven key stages. The assess influences where the user looks at the current service and identifies the need for change. Then the need for change, summary of the current position and influences 
in readiness to explore options. In explore options, the user answers a series of questions to define the future service, and this will then select appropriate delivery model options for the user. These can then be evaluated under evaluate options using an options approach and template, which will come up with a preferred delivery model or models. These then go into the next stage of political acceptability, where one would inform members and uh, get approval to inform and test the market. So under market appetite, the question of looking at those models, seeing what the market thinks of them, going back to committee or to members to gain approval to go ahead with procurement and define the contract. The engagement we had was comprehensive and included all the local authorities shown here, together with organisations such as CIHT, ADEPT, APSI, HTMA, DFT, HA, TAG and others. This culminated in the website being tested in December by a number of authorities that have participated in workshops and some that hadn't. The 14 evidence case studies were key to providing examples in the guidance document. Other relevant case studies can be found listed in an appendix of the guidance document. The toolkit can be accessed from this website link, www.dft.gov.uk forward slash HMEP. And on that page, have a look under Efficiency Options, and there'll be a link there to this page of the toolkit. You'll need to register and log on. The website will store your details, passwords, etc. It will also store all your work. All work you carry out can be downloaded and printed and as you see on this page you can see the link to the guidance document. The guidance document can be downloaded or referred to at any time. There are relevant clickable links on each page of the website and those will take you to the relevant section of the guidance document. So after Having registered and logged on, you'll be taken to my, the My Routes page. This is where your routes are saved and you can amend, copy, delete, download them. Each procurement you route you undertake can be saved with a title of your own choosing. The user is taken on a route through a process that includes all the interactive elements that I talked about assess influences, exploring options before um, evaluating those options. So, the first stage is the introduction, which gives a general description of the toolkit and gives general guidance. And you can see the process here taken from the guidance document. The first interactive element is the assess influences page. The influences are those issues that currently affect highway maintenance services such as low levels of customer satisfaction or constrained budgets. The screen describes nine core influences and gives issues that need to be taken into account when in identifying the need for change from the current delivery model. There are guidance notes, as you see, against each core influence. Having completed the question, each core influence has a variety of questions assigned to it. The user is strongly advised to add text in the boxes for justification for future reference when answering these questions. Users can also add their own questions under each core influence if they wish. Having completed the questions, the scores can be calculated to show whether the current service is fully aligned, partially aligned, or not aligned with current thinking. And the overall need for change is expressed as a percentage against each of these headings at the bottom of the table. The 
The overall need for change summary scores will identify whether the current service is fully aligned, in which case it is up to the user, whether there is any need to change, and continue to explore options in this toolkit. If it's partially or not aligned, there is obviously a need for change and to continue to explore options. The Explore Options pages provide a series of questions against each of the core, core influences. There are some basic assumptions and those are described here. The user is required to make a mark on a sliding scale of 1 to 10 where the user wishes to be in relation to the new service delivery model. There are seven basic delivery models from private funding to in-house delivery. And the user can get guidance by clicking on the Compare Delivery Models button to see the relevant comments and scores for each question against each model. Justification text is also encouraged for future reference. Having answered all the questions, the user can calculate the scores. It will highlight models in red, which it suggests are excluded because of limited contract periods or procurement timescales that have been selected by the user. When answering questions, pop-up boxes will advise the user of when these scores are selected. The final interactive step is to evaluate these model options. So the user can choose which of those models it wants to explore and evaluate. The Evaluate Options uses a standard options appraisal framework. The framework uses weighted criteria to assess each chosen model. The framework can be downloaded as an Excel spreadsheet and there's also an Excel an example spreadsheet that can be downloaded too. The best way to conduct this evaluation, we feel, is by a team of senior officers in a workshop. So you can use the spreadsheet as part of this workshop and come back and enter this online. Or the user can also use the online options appraisal framework by amending the criteria and weightings online. Once the evaluation has been carried out, the score for each model is calculated and the user can then select the model or models to be taken forward. So, now you've assessed the influences, explored options and evaluated them to determine the most appropriate delivery model or models for your new contract. The next step is to gain political acceptability from members make the market aware of your proposal and assess the market appetite. And then having done this, define the contract using HMP guidance on collaboration, specification, the form of contract, pre-qualification questionnaire, and so on. And then you can save your route, as we saw at the beginning. Finally, you're asked to provide feedback not just on your experience of using the toolkit or how it can be improved, but also on any savings that you have made and any case studies that you feel will be relevant for other users. We look forward to you using the toolkit and getting your feedback. Thank you for listening and I'll be happy to answer any questions.